welcome back. We are here with like, it's probably like our 20th episode, but we're going to say it's the first one. We have a new name, finally came up with a name, and it is <laughs> This Week in Brotherly Love, because we talk about stuff, current events in Philly, or events with a Philly angle on it. So today's topic isn't per se something that happened in Philly. It's something that's wild. And then we'll t discuss like if that happened in Philly, what do you think might happen or how could we prevent something like that maybe in Philly? So uh, what I'm thinking about, it's pretty wild. Um, I kind of like still don't even really understand how it happened, what happened. Um, I feel like there's a lot to still come out about it. I already though have kind of said, I think, the people in charge are definitely guilty to at least some extent. What am I talking about? The Travis Scott concert. Uh, so basically what happened, by the way, this is November 8th, in case you're listening like uh, in the future, some 2021. So what happened recently, Travis Scott had a uh, concert and 50,000 people were at this concert or as a festival, bunch of people, went to his stage for he's the headliner he's the only person playing at that time and it sounds like there's a bum rush to the front and there was like a stampede and people got crushed and eight people died now here's where it gets a little bit interesting is one if you saw any videos there's people like bum rushing the concert from the beginning of the concert at 2 p.m people are jumping fences, breaking down fences to get into the concert. Then inside the concert just looks pretty wild. Looks like a wild time the whole time. Uh, definitely pretty rowdy. There's kids there. I don't know how I, um, I would bring a kid to an event like that. But 10 year old, a 10 year old died. 10 year old died, but there's, yeah, there's little kids there. Uh, and just looking at the event at 4 p.m., it, it didn't look like an event that was too peaceful or chill. Uh, then though, here's where another crazy thing happens is there's a lot of people passing out throughout the day, which is a little weird because it's not hot. Um, so it's probably people like on drugs or dehydrating from alcohol, maybe whatever, but a little bit weird. Here's what's weird is, uh, is also weird. A security guard said that one of the security guards might've been given Narcan um, because they might've been injected in the net with what they, believe might have been heroin i don't understand that at all um yeah i don't understand that at all where that comes from why that would be who would inject that just seems like a fishy thing really weird haven't heard much more about that but like an official person was on the news saying someone thinks they got injected in the neck super bizarre so here's what i'm thinking one i guess to relate to philly when I went to probably the last time I was at Made in America, like five years ago, I actually saw a bunch of kids bum rush the festival and um, like break, break down a fence and, and get in. So it seems like that's uh, something that has become more commonplace from reading comments. It seems like that happens like quite frequently now. How do you prevent something like this happening? Was this a freak event? Could this have happened somewhere like Philly? Was Travis Scott to blame at all? Was the concert goers to blame at all? Were the concert organizers to blame? What, what are your thoughts and feelings? So um, as far as from what I can tell, because I have I've read a few things about this just because it's like you can't not, right? right. And, and, and just on the radio today on NPR, they were kind of talking about the mechanics of uh, emergencies at concerts or like just mass gatherings and like kind of proper procedures and stuff like that. As far as I can tell, the ultimately every single one of your questions lands on the organizers of the concert. Um, they, from the get go have total power to dictate how many folks they end up selling tickets to, um, how they 
organized and set up the concert grounds, uh, whether it's it's barriers, how they're constructed, what type of barriers they are, you know, are they being positioned in a helpful way or not a helpful way or a little bit of both? Um, could, could it have been a little bit on the city for not uh, having better code or or uh, watch like checking over it? Apparently, and, so here here's here's the key with this, right? Like, so the city in hindsight and kind of their response to this had warned that they feared that too many people were being brought to this venue. And we should note the power of these companies like Live Nation mm. and the ticket companies and, and sponsors of these, they, they have an outside influence. Definitely. Um, in Philadelphia, you know, they, they tried to move the concert to the park more out of the way, not like in the middle of the city. And Live Nation was able to overturn that within like two days. Yeah, and, and so, and, and it's not like a necessarily like a thing of like political influence or there being some kind of corruption. There is like a lot of inertia and, and power in organizing these events, getting a venue kind of established. And then they start like selling tickets. And before you know it, it's like, a living thing it's like a, right. you know what i mean and trying to redirect it mad. um according to police because this was in houston um uh, according to houston pd they were extremely troubled by what they were seeing but it was a private security mm. uh, uh firm that was in charge as far as like inside now there was definitely cops like in there you know but like right. they didn't have like exclusive like jurisdiction on on like controlling the crowd, making decisions, it's pretty clear that there weren't emergency safeguards that were put into place. For instance, there's a lot of concert organizers that have a direct patch from people on the ground that are observing the crowd, seeing what's going on. If they identify problems that maybe either cause, uh, uh, you know, present an opportunity where we got to shut this down or we got to make announcements or we have to start going into the crowd and trying to, whether it's perform emergency services on somebody who's sick or if there's violence that's broken out, whatever, there, there are like a lot of methods in, in mm -hmm. modern concerts that have, that have been put into place that are, that are effective. And it was obvious that there wasn't anything for this. Do you think they, um, that like Travis Scott should have, pause the concert while something was happening like I saw a bunch of videos today of um of other artists I saw one of like Adele one of uh like Lincoln Park where they saw someone in the stands pass out and they go like stop the music stop the music stop the music and like get away get away give them space and they actually like uh conduct the um the rescue kind of should um that have been on Travis Scott or, uh, or is it like it's impossible to know if an artist can even tell what's happening out there? It's dark. There's a lot of things going on. I, I think you bring up you bring up all all good points, right? Like I guess so. In those situations, I actually know a couple of the situations you're talking about where a performer was able to observe something that was going on, call attention to it, bring the concert to a halt, and the person was able to receive the medical attention or emergency services that they needed. However, it's not clear that Scott even necessarily knew what was going on. And also I was listening to like a concert expert who brought up some really good points about the potential danger on shutting on like stopping like a concert mid concert. And especially if we're talking about Matt, you know, you were talking about like an isolated incident running and stuff. Yeah. yeah like an ice, you were talking like an isolated incident, maybe someone fainting or seeing, you know, whatever, pushing and shoving going, Oh, Hey, stop the concert, help the, that person out. Whereas this was like, apparently the crowd was just completely out of control. There was too many people. It sounded like more of a capacity problem and, and, a, and a crowd flow problem. And so like, that's, that's an organizational aspect to this process. I don't know if him stopping it would have made any, any difference. Right. Um, so, cause like, it sounds like, like these people were so packed in that like the fatalities, a lot, a lot of from these kind of like crowd related fatalities aren't as people being trampled, but they are so packed in so tight, they simply can't breathe. And then they have, they have lung and heart related failures to their system. And, and they, they either go into cardiac arrest or they die from asphyxiation. 
Did you hear anything about this heroin or Narcan injection? No, I hadn't. I had not heard that, which would honestly, it would tie into my kind of re again, like <laughs> that they're obviously going to do an investigation and we're going to learn a lot. And like with the, something as much as like involving 50,000 like concert goers and then hundreds, maybe thousands of people involved in organizing it and executing this thing. Like there's a lot of moving parts they need to figure out as far as who's to blame. I think ultimately, yeah. though, it has got to it, it is clear that companies like Live Nation and other organizers of these concerts put profit over people and they, over, they oversell these things. They do not provide enough access to hydration and medical services, and they do not set up the concert grounds with it in mind of what happens when shit goes down, because it inevitably does. I mean, you and I have both were I uh, have been have been a copious amounts of concerts yeah and the it's, war zone. It, it's very clear when you arrive at a concert ground that is like I think I think we're all cool here I think this has been thought out you know where yeah. other times we're like if something goes down we're lucky I'm lucky enough that I, I haven't been around when like something really truly goes down like I've been yeah. in intense crowds where it's like <laughs> at any given time like something could break out and you're lucky enough that it doesn't but, Made in America a few times hasn't been um, too yeah. well planned. Like I was there, um, I was there one time where I feel like it easily could have turned into a stampede or someone getting trampled. Um, and it was like there was no control. It was a matter of uh, hopefully something bad doesn't happen right now. Cousin Nick will will be the first one to raise his hand about a story of like a concert like that gets out of control where they were at made in america this was maybe five six years ago where like somebody just yelled at he's got a gun you know mm -hmm. and it started a stampede and they literally him and he had it was two other buddies and they were there with their partners they literally like formed a, a protective kind of like cone around uh, their partners and people just kind of broke on either side of them. And luckily they're like big guys. So they're able to do that. Not everybody's in a position to do that, but like he said, it was like, it was like seconds. It was insane. If we hadn't just like reacted the way we had, who knows what would have happened because people just lose all ability. And that's why I'm not going to be like, Oh, the concert goers have got a responsibility. What are you going to do against the sheer inertia of tens of thousands of people being like pushed and corralled into like a certain, I mean, like, honestly, at, at, at what, uh, at what point are you just like, the individual is completely powerless once they're in well, that situation. There's one guy I saw who um, jumped on to like um, the cameraman table and was like screaming at the cameraman, like, please like tell them to stop, tell them to stop the show where it obviously didn't work, but it was like kudos to that kid because um, like he was trying to do everything he could to uh, to get someone to do something. Absolutely. Where, where also people were like that cameraman should have been able to like radio to someone to stop it. But you bring a good point that um, that could have also been dangerous. I guess there needs to be a, a, like a fire. Uh, drill or some type of drill for these situations where it's like when something like this happens what's the protocol it sounds like there is no protocol um they just don't expect something bad to happen or, i don't know so that's not a good uh, plan uh, i'm i'm a cynic man i i i truly believe when you're talking about all this money on the line people for for whatever reason large organizations and individuals decide to go in the opposite direction when you're talking about a lot of money and people's lives on the line instead of going the extra mile and just hope for the best plan for the worst it will end up reducing liability on the organizers the people the sponsors that won't you know what i mean like i feel like if you just anticipate this stuff you be proactive you think in a humane way you'll not only protect your investment but you'll save people's lives. So I will, yeah. I will be forever baffled by people like Live Nation and these organizations that decide to cut corners. They obviously didn't have a plan. And if they did, it was inadequate. So yeah. I'm not going to stand here and like armchair expert and be like, it was clear they didn't have a plan. Okay, maybe they did have a plan, but it, yeah, it was obvious right. that they hadn't it provided the type of training or resources needed to actually carry out that plan.
Yeah, no, you're completely right. And I feel like too, they think it's, um, in my opinion, they think it's like helping their profits and it probably is in the short term, but I feel like when you are more safe, uh, it ends up being more profitable in the long term too. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I mean, like, honestly, I'm so tired of this short term way of thinking or, or yeah. even, or even more cruel building in the cost of loss of life and injury yeah, that's to your profit <laughs> margin, expecting yeah. it to happen and still going forward and doing nothing about it. Cause you know, that happens a lot. Oh, definitely. Without that. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Well, on that note, Pat, it was great talking to you as always. I love talking to you. I'm glad we have a title now. This is the week in brotherly love, something like that. I'll get, I'll get used to it soon, but <laughs> thanks for listening. If you're listening out there, as always, if you're not listening this week, you're probably going to be listening in like 20 years when we're both famous politicians or something, whatever. I'm going to stop rambling now, Pat. Love you. Love have you, a good man. One. Peace.